Hello, Emily. Thank you so much for joining us at the writing room. Hello, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. I'm very well. Good. Where are you tuning in from? Covent Garden. Our oh, office is in Covent Garden. Um, oh, just when we start recording. <laughs> oh, okay. It's fine. There is building work going on um, and I have a lunch meeting today, otherwise I would have done this from home, but there is a lunch meeting, um, building work happening, so I am sorry. It's fine, don't worry about it. It happens to the best of us. Uh, I'll just dive into the first question, if that's okay. Could you please introduce yourself and explain your role as a literary agent? Of course. So my name is Emily Glenister and I am a literary agent at DHH Literary Agency. Um, we're a London-based boutique agency, which is run by David Headley, my boss, a big man, um, who I adore. And we're a very small team. There's five of us. We work very closely together. And my role as a literary agent is looking after those authors, looking after them, selling their books, loving their books, championing their books, and being their soundboard, their agony aunt, their friend, and their, their confidant. Perfect, thank you. What would you say the pros are of having agency representation as an author? I think it's really important that the author keeps a positive, great relationship with their editor. So whenever something, you know, contentious or a bit tricky happens, it's really great to have somebody else to fight their corner and go into battle for them. So that the author and editor, the agent, yes, the agent can be the, well, the bad guy saying, this doesn't work for us and we, and we don't want this. And can this happen? Can we do it like this? And the author can just come in and be like, here's my great book. <laughs> yeah. And then the editor and the author keep that very simpatico relationship. Um, it's our job to be the bad guy, but also, you know, we're their advocate, we're their biggest advocate that they have. Um, and so I think self-publishing is a brilliant way to go about it, if that works for you. Um, but my job as an agent, I know that, I know that my clients really appreciate having somebody there that they can call and say, I need, I'm really worried about this, can you help? And I'm there just to help. Yeah, totally, thank you. Could you briefly explain how authors should approach a literary agent when inquiring? I think research is key. Um, my big, big don't is to send out an email that is, dear sir, madam, or worse, dear sir, that's my, whew, that's a big pet hate of mine. Um, more than anything, because my email address is on my agent page. So you literally have to go to that page to get my email address and you see my name right there. So when I get those, I do think, hmm. Um, but research is really key. And you have to look at that agent's list and think, where do I fit in? If there is somebody on that list who is very similar to you in terms of what the books you're writing and all of that kind of stuff, then, you know, I, I think chances are a bit slimmer, perhaps, of you being right for that agency. Um, but go in also with an open mind and thinking, and, and not thinking that, um, oh, you know, that they're never gonna, they, they won't sign me, they don't, they don't, they won't want me, they won't want this. Because I think, I think it, we can, in, in pitch letters, it's really easy to see if an author doesn't believe in themselves and it's so, heartbreaking apart from anything else but also it's really tough for us to go to advocate for the author pr prior to signing them if we already feel that the author doesn't really believe that they should be there although I will say that this industry does have a certain knack for kicking people when they feel like crap yeah. I do I do know that um, and so finding that inner strength is difficult but if you can come across as someone who really believes in your work you're writing to me for a particular reason and you, you know already, and can put this in your letter as to why we'd be a good fit, that that will interest me immediately. Yeah, that's great, thank you. What one piece of advice would you give to querying authors? The research thing comes back there. Um, I think maybe don't send out a blanket, um, even if you're changing the names, you know, don't send out a blanket submission letter to say, 30 agents really pick and choose who you want to send your work to because chances are not all of those 30 40 agents are going to be right for your book you're just kind of 
throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. Yeah. Um, for instance, I sometimes get sent fantasy sci-fi books. Um, I don't represent those, and I do say that on my page. So when I get sent those, it's kind of an immediate, you know, yeah, probably not for me. Um, so that that comes the research element comes back into that um, quite strongly. Um, be very choosy. Be very choosy with this is this is the person who's going to be your your ally and your confidant and someone that you have to work alongside hopefully for a very long time yeah so you've got to be really clever in who you're approaching it isn't i know that when you're a querying author it can feel like oh any agent would be great but that's that's not um the case in fact that can also almost be detrimental to your career um so i would be picky be choosy be clever it's my it's my advice so really like research and tailor it and make sure that because at the Absolutely. same time you're choosing the agent as well as the agent choosing you so oh a hundred percent you know ultimately we the agents work for you the author um especially if you are fortunate enough to have a bunch of offers on the table um we very much work for you you're the client um <laughs> you're employing us if anything so I, I think if you if you come at it from that mindset that that becomes a lot easier to feel a bit more confident in what you're doing and feeling that yes I belong here I belong on your list and here's why um but tailoring your submission is is really I know it's time consuming but it is really important yeah thank you that's really really useful advice just to help demystify the process a little bit when you have signed an author what is the submission process like to editors yeah so I'm a very collaborative agent I very much like to work with my authors on their books before we send them out um sometimes it's the case they don't always need a lot of work sometimes they're near submission ready but oftentimes they're not and that's okay um so what I tend to do is I tend to take a good couple months or or, or a number of weeks to properly go through the manuscript again because I like to read it as a reader first rather than making my notes you know I like to read it as I would if I picked it up in the bookshop and then I, I read it again and I make all my notes um structurally uh, continuity you know all those little nitty-gritty bits as well as the overarching stuff and then it will go back to the author and they will go through my notes and I go yes this works or Emily what were you thinking that note is appalling um, and we'll work to make the manuscript the absolute best it can be at this stage in the game. While they're doing that, I will be working on putting together my submission list, so all the editors that I wanna send it to, I will probably be seeing some of those editors for meetings of some kind and be pitching the book um, and also drawing up my pitch letter. So, you know, we do like the little elevator pitch and then we'll do the, the blurb and the rights that we're offering, you know, the whole package basically. Yeah. And then when the author comes back to me with their work on the manuscript, um, I'll read it again. And hopefully that should be, you know, that should be it. But there might be a few more things to just tweak. And then um, and then we go out. But I'm very collaborative and I will show the author the submission list and the letter, which we sometimes home together. Um, you know, this is their book. And so I'm very, I'm very passionate about transparency when it comes to going out with their baby, if you like, you know, showing a complete stranger their work. Um, so it's a very collaborative process. And usually I say to the editors, between six and eight weeks, I would love to hear from you. Um, but it can sometimes take longer than that. Yeah. yeah, that sounds great. Thank you. This might be a good question. You've already mentioned the dear sir thing, but um, <laughs> what rookie mistakes are likely to result in an instant no? Yeah, that, dear sir, yeah. um, or dear sir, madam. I, or to whom it may concern, Oh, oh, it bothers me so much. I just think it's lazy. I'm, I'm, I'm. To be frank, I think it's really lazy, and I think with with the internet and Google and technology, there's just no excuse. There's no excuse anymore um, for things like that. I think if you've got, if it's a, uh, yeah, some agencies and they consider all the submissions, uh, that's slightly more acceptable. But even then, I'd address it to the agency. Um, but it really, it does happen a lot. And another, an instant no would be, well, a, um, a genre that I just don't represent. So sci-fi fantasy. I like a bit of magical realism and urban fantasy and it says so on my page, 
but sort of that epic fantasy, the, the heavy sci-fi stuff, I don't. Uh, it's, it's, I would be a rubbish agent for it. It's, um, it's not necessarily that I don't like it. I just wouldn't be good at it. Yeah. Um, I don't read it. I don't know that market very well. My colleagues do. There's a, there's a colleague I have who specializes in that and that's who you should be writing to. So if it's a genre that I just don't represent and I've been quite explicit about that. Um, the other thing, this isn't something like an instant rejection, but something that will affirm my decision is if I have to sadly reject a book for whatever reason. Um, if I pass on a book, then... I do sometimes get responses which are unkind and very angry um, and it doesn't make me go oh should I have given them a chance it just reaffirms my decision <laughs> so if you can handle passes with grace I know it's hard I know it is I've been there myself I've absolutely been there myself I know what it feels like um, and it's not that fun sending them but I do respond to everybody um, because I think you've taken the time to send me your work, so I will absolutely take the time to read it and respond to you. But please don't be unkind to me based on my decision. I'd love to take on everyone that I possibly could, if I could, um, but it, I just can't. So there will be passes I have to make which are regrettable. Um, and if you could handle them with grace and decorum, better for everybody in the long run. Yeah, exactly. I was just about to say, I think it's just nicer for everybody involved and it can almost be a little bit like you're not right for for me but like there's perfect for someone else. Somebody else yeah exactly absolutely because it's all subjective it, you know ultimately my opinion means bugger all in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> yeah. it's just my opinion and that is all it is um so what's not right for me might be absolutely the exact thing that another agent is looking for um so it's really important not to get too disheartened with a pass because really doesn't mean much doesn't mean anything about your writing doesn't mean anything about your work it's just not right for me and if I know that then we weren't a good fit in the first place so maybe you've had a lucky escape as an author <laughs> next question is what would you say are the three most important factors that determine whether a publisher chooses a book or not oh um the market's really important mm. they're looking at market trends and seeing what's doing really well um it it shouldn't always be about that it should just be is this book great but often it, it it's not um there are many more factors to consider um so that's quite a big thing i think um scheduling of course if they've got room on the schedule you know that all comes under that sort of umbrella of the marketplace um insofar as the book i would have said a great story because <sighs> storytelling is such a skill I think, you know, anyone could, well, not anyone, but lots of people can write a book and, you know, it's from A to Z and sort of get it down on paper, but it's, it's hooking the reader and keeping them wanting to turn those pages. And I know from having speak, spoken to editor friends that if they are wanting to, you think of how many submissions they get, if they want to keep turning those pages of a submission, that to them, same with an agent, that to them makes them go, oh, this is worth speaking to my colleagues about. Mm. Um, and of course, then they do, you know, they then pass it on to their colleagues and they get a bit more feedback and, and a bit of a wider readership going on. Um, so it's that marketplace storytelling. And a third one, oh, I would have said those two are the most important things um, the editors look for. Of course, there are only a few types of story, but there are so many ways to tell them. So if you can come at uh, a, perhaps a familiar trope or genre with a really new hook and new angle to it that will always get an editor's attention you know um genre bending is is really popular as it should be because it, it puts a lovely spin on an already established genre um so originality marketplace and story yeah they're really great it got me thinking actually because our next question kind of pits two of those against each other um, it's obviously the marketplace and lots of things that are out of an author's control like you know scheduling or what's yes. kind of in trend what's kind of working yeah um, can be different to the storytelling aspect so we wanted to know do you think that following current publishing trends and um, things that are popular at the moment improve a writer's chance of getting published or do you think the quality of the work trumps that uh the latter because if you're writing what's popular now and you're 
and you go on submission. By the time that book, if it's picked up, gets published, that trend will have changed or gone or turned on its head or something. So I, I, I would always say don't write to trend. Um, it's that's not that's not for the author to worry about. That's up to the editor to worry about. Um, that's up to them to worry about whether or not it fits into the market. I don't I don't think any author should write for a market. I always think they should write for themselves, which I know is a very tired piece of advice that's said over and over again, but it's said over and over again because it's true. If you're writing for a market, you very limit you're limiting yourself quite quite significantly. Um, so no, I think that quality quality over 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 marketplace and you know pressure to write what looks popular trumps it every single time yeah I completely agree I think also when you mentioned storytelling before it's something that's just natural like if you can tell a story it's mm -hmm. rare um if you can really grip a reader and I think yeah. if you're focusing on just that aspect of it the writer won't get bored of it which means the reader won't get bored of it no, and you can, t I mean, like, maybe, maybe not everyone can, and maybe I'm talking rubbish, but I can tell if, if a writer has just kind of gone through the motions and sort of done the A to B to C to D of the storytelling, whereas you can read another book, which is just page after page of, you know, because it's their world, it's their imagination, it's all come from this original place. Um, and it's really hard to explain unless I have like, you know, example B, example A and example B, but it's just something you know when you read a book. So I would never advise an author to write for a marketplace. It just doesn't serve them. And it, as I said, it really limits their, their imagination. Yeah, no, totally, thank you. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to say, where can people find you or anything you'd like to plug? Oh, um, so <laughs> my, um, my, the agency is DHH Literary Agency, so there's of course the website and there's a meet the team tab and it's got, um, it's got all our faces on there, my hair looks a lot nicer than it does today, uh, my submissions are closed at the moment, they should be open though in the next week or two, um, I have been closed over summer just so I can catch up, because um, all my lovely clients sent me their manuscripts at the same time, I love it when they do that, so um, they're obviously my priority, so I have to look after them and sort of go through all of that stuff first. But um, I am actively, when I reopen, actively going to be looking for new, original, brilliant submissions. Um, I love women writers. That's very much my um, specialty. I think women's stories, women writers or women identifying, that's very much um, my jam, if you like. I just love, I love women of all kinds. And I just think their stories are fascinating so more women please um and i'm i'm on twitter very gobby at uh, emily glanister very gobby on twitter i like to do some q a's sometimes when i've had a couple of glasses of wine um i find i'm more honest that way and i also feel like on a serious note that kind of information about you know demystifying publishing and things like that should be available to anyone and um, so I'm just very open about it as opposed to making you pay for any kind of masterclass, which no shade to anyone that does. It's just not, it's just not like for me. So um, if anyone wants to ask me a question on publishing, my DMs are open. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much. It's exactly why we asked you because I love like your, your Q&As on Twitter. We were like, this is the perfect person to get on. Well, I'm glad I didn't put you off. That's good. No, absolutely <laughs> so, but yeah, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you for asking me. Thank you.